Welcome to the Right Club Podcast, where the focus is on helping you, the real estate investor, advance to the next level. And now let's join this week's hosts and share ways for you to customize your life. What other factors are you considering, you know, when, when you're looking at an investment like this? Yeah, so there definitely is property management that is available. We decided to be a little bit more adventurous because we're already used to, I'm sure people have heard it if you listen to the other podcast, but we're used to managing properties that are from a distance. So there's a lockbox on the unit. We chose to also go with a, a gated community. So there's security guards that are there 24 seven if there's any problems. And we basically found some cleaning ladies, like even when we were visiting property, we're like, <laughs> we, we, hola, saw, hola. we saw one, we're like, hola, <laughs> hola. <laughs> and just wanted to get their attention and find out how it works. And uh, we felt pretty confident to doing it ourselves. So uh, we'll find out, we'll, we'll learn the harder, the easy way. But um, we do know that there is property management available if we feel like we're not comfortable enough doing it ourselves. Totally. And there's like four companies in Playa del Coco. Mm -hmm. So it's a town of what, maybe 8,000 people. And there's four property management companies owned by two of them by Canadians. Mm -hmm. So Canadian expats that have moved there and it's, they're good companies. Uh, it, they charge from what I've heard between 18 and 23% of uh, the revenue, which makes sense for Airbnb. It's always on the higher end. Florida goes up to 25, 27. We found one at 33%. Yeah, 33, so yeah. <laughs> get yeah, 30, used to 30, 33 is, is high, but usually I would say average, you know, for like when, it's more hands on is usually around the 20 to 25 mark, even in Canada. I, I remember like back in you know, 2018, 19, when I was going to Italy, you know, that's the same type of mentality, right? Of, you know, living a little bit slower life. Nothing is, you know, a hair on fire moment you know, it, it all will be taken care of. So um, let, let's dig into a little bit about the financing, if that's okay with you guys. Yes. You, said, you know, 250, Scotia's there. You know, what's the difference of, of qualifying for financing or what type of financing um, are, are, are you getting for, for properties in Costa Rica? So for the most part, there is no financing. You have to buy cash. So you have to bring in your, and that's another big complication. So buying cash, okay. Hurdle number one might be, where do I find that money? That's that's one idea like you're going to you can look at you can actually use registered funds. So RSP money to invest in Costa Rica on your house or pretty much anywhere in the world. Uh, you can use lines of credits or find private lenders in Canada or over there, like in Central America. Uh, but the other thing you have to be careful about, and we learned that the hard way as well, is when you bring in cash, anti-money laundering applies. So now you have to justify every single dollar. And of course, we're coming from Canada, so it was Canadian funds. We had to convert them to U.S. So they were asking questions. That took two months of answering questions. Why did you transfer the funds? Where did it come from? Where is it sitting? It's, it's worse than getting a mortgage. So get ready for that as well. It's going to be a lot of questions mm -hmm. if you're buying cash. There is financing if you buy new. So some new builds, the builder actually offer financing with a bank. It tends to be a much lower loan to value, like 50, 55. I have heard of 70%, but that's rare. Usually it's more 50, 55%. And then you have to come up with the remaining 45% or so. Uh, there's also lots of owner financing. So it's very common down there for other Americans, Canadians trying to sell their house or condo to offer a vendor take back for about five years. And interest rates are much higher, uh, between 6.5 and 7.5 for a mortgage. Mm -hmm. So that's about it. But you can't go to Scotia and get a mortgage. That's just not... Unless you become happen. a permanent resident. Yes. <laughs> so who do you need on your team you know, to, to transition, to be able to purchase? Like, I'm guessing there's going to be certain types of lawyers and accountants. Like, you know, who is it that you had to find? Because it's probably not the typical ones that we work with currently now, because this is a whole mm -hmm. different country, different rules. What does that look like? Yeah, so lawyer is similar to Canada. It's similar to Quebec, actually, because it's a notary, public, and lawyer. And they have the civil code, like in Quebec and California. So if anybody's familiar with buying in Quebec or California, there's a whole extra layer of rules and laws. So there's the common law, and then there's the civil code. And anyway, it gets complicated. You hear about everybody's story. So the lawyer or notary has to talk to the like you actually meet the seller in person oftentimes 
and you hear if they're divorced and like it's totally uh, <laughs> very transparent they know how long we've been married and they get really in depth with details but the actual document for the closing is super short it's three pages and it's like recitals and they just say and it's all in spanish so your lawyer has to be quite fluent if you don't speak spanish Yeah, thankfully we know some Spanish, mm -hmm. so we were able to kind of understand and then he translated the rest of it. Uh, on your team, you also need home insurance, which is very uncommon down there. Most people do not insure their properties. Um, so there is insurance, it's available, it's quite affordable. Uh, what else do you need? Uh, accounting is actually done with your law firm as well. So we recommend setting up a corporation And why would we set up a corporation, Jennifer? Well, I little think it just be a little quiz, but it just simplifies all the the entire process. And I think that I'd like to add to like what, what Francois said. I think that the lawyer is really the most important member of your team. Yes. Because even our lawyer, like if you want, don't if you want to simplify the whole process, he'll even open your bank account for you for a fee for a fee. So I mean, we you don't have to we suffer. We just love torture and love learning ourselves but we could have paid our lawyer to open the bank account for us because he knows it's complicated and he knows how it works so i mean I, we could have just used a lawyer for so many more things and saved and saved a, how, how much a lot of time I'm just curious how much would he have charged for that 500, 500 US. US. oh that would have totally been worth it for like I six know. back and forth at like your mark like whatever your yes. rate would technically be right yeah totally. hindsight being 2020 i think we <laughs> would have done it <laughs> But the reason I did it is, as some of you know, I do coach some people and mentor, and I wanted to know the full yeah. gamut, like what what's going to happen if you just show up at the bank and ask for an account. So I learned. And it was, yeah, it's a bit rough. So it might be worth the $500 US. It's totally done. worth it. <laughs> yeah, Jennifer says. But another big thing, people ask, do you incorporate or buy in your own name? So you can buy in your own name, no problem. It's not like in the US, people don't sue each other as a, a hobby. Like uh, there's, it's not a big deal there. But from the a tax why, standpoint, does it make a difference? It does. So again, uh, do your due diligence, but technically, depending on how your corporation is set up, it's quite separate from you. So you may not have to bring it back to Canada. So please check with your accountants and lawyers. Um, the other thing is power of attorney. So if something's going on at the house, let's say the roof is leaking, and you need to send, send someone down there. If you have a corporation, the lawyer builds in power of attorney. So you can call him and say, hey, we need to fix the roof and they have permission to act on your behalf. If it's in your personal name, you have to fly down there. So the house could be long gone before you go <laughs> and get things fixed. So yeah. Wow. So even why. so even for like obviously a roof or something like that would be maybe a larger or more of a major even repair, utilities. Even they can't small do. things. To, so in the corporation, you're able to build in that power of attorney. Yes. And and so you obviously you're still facilitating the absolutely fixing the roof, but because the lawyer is there and able to sign off and, and give that authority. Be able mm -hmm. to do that or you'd have to be there in person wow yeah because a lot is in person like opening the bank account you have to sign documents in person it's it's kind of a some of it's more archaic but they are quite advanced with uh, internet so super high speed internet so there's like some things anyway differences that you learn along the way so i know you're not an accountant you're not a lawyer so everybody definitely get your you know these people on your team but you know, is there a risk of being double taxed? Yes. So because Canada and Costa Rica does not have a tax treaty like the U.S. So in the U.S., you pay a percentage to the IRS and then you pay the difference to CRA, like if it's like a top up sort of. Costa Rica does not have that. So you'll have to pay your Costa Rican taxes. And then if you bring income back to Canada, you'll have to pay your Canadian taxes. Our goal is not that. We want to leave the money there to buy more down there. So we were told by our team that that is okay. So maybe it's not the case, but. Yeah. One thing though, is that the, the income tax in Costa Rica is very low. It's between three and 15%. So even if you were double tax, like it's not, not that you want to give up more money, but it's not that bad it's not detrimental yeah it's not like you're going to pay 50 percent mm -hmm. capital gains are super low property taxes are 0.25 percent of the evaluation so there's a lot of pros um mm -hmm. but again yeah do your homework before buying 
and think about long term because when you're buying there it's not it's kind of a longer term purchase it's not um you can flip and do things but it's a different market things move slower <laughs> yeah and you know you you've been obviously done your research and found out a lot of information so obviously through others in the network that have purchased in costa rica but where, where are you finding you know this information reviewing it for those that want to kind of really go deep into it what, where what are the best sources for you to find this type of information there's a youtube channel thanks for listening to the right club podcast where the focus is on helping all levels of real estate investors advance to the next level and help you customize your life be sure to tune in next week at rightclub.com slash podcast or wherever you listen to podcasts and if you get a few seconds please rate the podcast wherever you're listening it helps the show get noticed by others like you and we truly appreciate it and don't forget to subscribe